And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Cat Lady. Now, Cat Lady is... <laughs> cat Lady is not a term, I think, that's very positive to people, right? Um, if someone's called a cat... Like, like the, the instruction books talks about... There are many famous people like Marie Antoinette and Ernest Hemingway were cat ladies. I'm like, all right. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what you're trying... Are they trying to justify it? But in this game, you are a cat lady. Now, I'll be honest with you. This cover did not really appeal to me. I'm not a huge fan of cats anyway, but I have to get over that because like every other game is a cat game these days. Cats are the new zombies. A cat zombie game. Anyway, but I heard a lot of good things about this. People were comparing it to Sushi Go, which is a game I really enjoy. A light card drafting game is what this is. So let's see if it's cool. So a deck of cat cards is shuffled, these game cards are shuffled, and a grid of nine cards, a three by three grid, is placed on the table. You also have three stray cats that you'll be drawing from a deck of stray cats. Those cats are going to be the only stray cats you'll see over the course of the game, just three of them. Now on a player's turn, it's very simple. You take a whole row or a column of cards. So let's say I take this column, uh, I'll take all these cards, and then they're replaced with cards from the deck. Now, depending on what types of cards you take will depend on where they go and what happens. If you take a food card, you'll simply get a cube, or in this case of this one, two of those cubes of that color. So we got tuna, we got chicken, we got milk, and then we got wild. If you take a cat, you're going to put that cat in front of you, and you need to feed that cat by the end of the game. So this one needs three tuna to be fed by the end of the game. If so, he's worth six points. If you don't feed him, all cats are worth minus two. You can uh, take toys. There's all sorts of toys that are in the game. This is a feather wand. There's also things like a scratching post. And at the end of the game, you're going to get points for each set of different ones you have. So if I have all five different toys, I'll get 12. If I have two of one and one of another, I'll get three for the set of two and then one for the other one. There are different outfits in the game for the cats. And whoever has the most of these outfit cards, costume cards, gets six points at the end of the game. Whoever has, the, whoever has none of them gets, loses two points. Catnip, if you have one, it's worth minus two. If you have two or three, it's worth one victory point for every cat you have fed. And if, it's, if you have four catnip, it's worth two points for every cat you have fed. There's also spray bottles that you can get over the course of the game. If you have a spray bottle, you can use those to move the cat. See, when you take a row or column, you're going to put the cat next to that row or column that you took. The next player can take any row or column except for the one that the cat's at. So it's going to limit their choices. The spray bottle lets you move it around. A lost cat card by itself doesn't mean anything, but if you get two of them, you can discard those to take a two victory point chip or to take one of these stray cats. Stray cats um, usually have special abilities, so for example, Zora Stir is worth two points for every costume you have. Antoinette is worth two points for every white cat you feed. Cats are usually pretty obvious if they're white, black, or orange, but in case you can't tell, in the very top corner, you'll notice there is a little B or W here. And then Macaque, or however you say this guy's name, if he's fed, he counts as an extra catnip. You're going to keep going until you can't refill the rows or columns at that point. People will count up points for their cats, their toys, their costumes and catnip, and you don't want too much food at this point in time. See, food is great, but whoever has the most leftover food after feeding their cats is going to lose two points. So having too much food can be a problem. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Okay, so the artwork in this game is okay. Uh, you know, it's this drawn artwork, and I guess they're going for kind of this cute cuteness factor to it. But it almost, I don't know, it almost kind of looks like prototype. And they made all the cats look pretty much exactly the same. I don't know. The artwork is fine. The card quality is okay. The cubes are also fine. My biggest concern with the cubes is why not make little cans of tuna? Why not make little legs of chicken? Uh, probably to save costs, right? But they have this nice cat in there. So overall, the components are fine. Uh, and again, I think this cutesy artwork is going to appeal to a lot of people. I, I like cutesy cartoony artwork, but this artwork... I don't know. I just thought the whole thing could have been done a little bit. Maybe had a little bit slightly a better professional look to it. 
Okay, so I really do enjoy this game. All right, despite how it looks, and you know, after I talked there about the the art artist, I noticed that the artist and designer are the same person. He does comics and stuff. So again, I, I I'm I'm hesitant to call this bad art. This is just not my style. And like I said, this covers I don't know this cat lady thing. Sushi Go. I'm like, do you like sushi? You'll play this. This game. Do you like cats? I I don't know, but it is a really good game. I like the idea of grabbing a row or a column. That's a pretty simple. And then you collect different things. Go for toys. There are a lot of points. Or get cats and get the food you need for those cats. Uh, get the, the stray cats are really powerful. Do you take two? Are you going to take a stray cat? Make sure you can feed it or it's worth negative points. Or you can just go for a straight up two points. The game is not long. On the box here, I believe it says 30 minutes. 30 minutes if you're playing slow. This is a 15, 20 minute game. And that's good. This really is kind of a successor to Sushi Go. It has that same kind of feel, has points that score the same way. Some cards, you collect sets of them, you get points. You know, the, the cats can give you positive or negatives. Uh, some cards if, will give you the points if you have the most. But there's a lot of differences too. I don't think it's an either or situation. And I, and I don't know I should even keep saying the word Sushi Go when this review is actually about Cat Lady. But Cat Lady is a game that I definitely think you should check out. It certainly was a surprise for me. It's a nice, cool little small game. I'm always in the market for these. Um, recently, someone said, hey, you should stop reviewing these small games because you're not interested in them. Yes, I am. I'm always on the lookout for something like this. This is a great game for families. It's a great game for groups to get together because you're going to sit there and draft cards and have a really entertaining, fun time. So high recommendation for me. I really like this one. It's simple. It's easy. It goes around the table pretty well. Uh, it, it's two to four players. It scales pretty well, although I kind of think I like it best with three or four. Two is okay. You're drafting back and forth, and you can even be more tactical and where you place that cat. But with four players, you know, it's a little bit more random, but there's also... The, the board keeps changing up. You'll be like, where is tuna? How come I never see tuna? And then suddenly there's a lot of tuna. Neat, fast, fun. Recommend it. Cat Lady. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.